Hey guys, how you doing today? Uh, you are looking at my philodendron lemon lime upright. <laughs> she is a really pretty plant. But, she had a little accident. <laughs> On top of the fact that she needs to be propagated because she's getting very long and lanky at the top. As you can see, I'm going to be cutting the top of that off. But um, she had a fan knocked over on top of her. So, oh God, crazy. But what I want to do is I want to propagate in perlite. And what I more or less want to talk about today is propagating in perlite and why perlite works so well. Um, because inquiring minds want to know, and I, I've always propagated in mostly water. Um, you can see down here I have a couple of propagations that I just started and what have you. But um, anyways, I'm going to explain to you guys why perlite works well and works fast. And then we're going to go ahead and propagate my lemon lime and we're going to do a little test. So, between perlite and water propagation. So, let me go sit down and I will we'll get started. Okay, guys. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is I've got... Now, this I just done right before the video. This is just a little container. It's got holes in it. I should have never closed this all the way. Oh, so I'm never going to be able to get it back open. Oh my goodness. Really? Oh, I was afraid it was going to go flapping everywhere. Okay, these are two nodes. Now, I, I just put these in here. So, but anyways, this is um, Ethereum Goldingii, Goldingii, <laughs> whatever. I got it last year from um, Equigenera. It came, it was beautiful, but it started failing. So I've had it in lava rock since last summer when I got it. Um, it's done nothing. I cut it in half, stuck it back in the lava rock with water. Still has done nothing. So I just put it in the perlite, and we're going to see how that goes. We're going to keep an eye on this. I'm going to shut it. I am not shutting it all the way, though. Because I'll never get it back open. I'll put a piece of tape on it later. But anyways, okay. Now this one. Oops, i got to move my camera. This is my Melanochrysum. Philodendron Melanochrysum. She gorgeous. I cut the top of her off about two, maybe three weeks ago. I wish I would have wrote it down better. I wrote it on a piece of tape. The tape popped up off of the container and I think I vacuumed it up. So anyhow, I think it's been about three weeks. I'm going to move my camera back down. I've had her in perlite. Usually, now I've propagated this plant before and it takes forever. I've propagated it in water, I've propagated it in spag, and it takes forever to root out. But, I want you guys to see this. I'm going to be very careful. Okay, do you guys see, oops, the roots on this plant? There's still a lot of perlite stuck to it, but this rooted out beautifully. 
rooted out at the node right here. Let me see if I can rinse this perlite off so y'all can see better. There we go. But you can see it rooted out at this node and this node. I had the stick in there just holding it up. Perlite does a great job of holding plants up, but I put the stick in because it's kind of long. It's pretty long cutting. Longer than, longer of a cutting than what you would normally probably make. But anyways, I'm very happy with this plant. It is a tough plant to get rooted out when you're propagating it. So what I want to do right now is I'm going to put her I'm going to put her in some soil, and actually, I'll do that later. I don't have to do that on, on camera, but what I do want to do is I want to talk about perlite. I, I've seen a few videos. I've heard people talking about how great perlite is to uh, root up propagations and never understood why. And of course, you know, I want to know why, because I just don't get it. I was talking to a friend of mine, and I said, you know, we were talking about it one night, and I said, well, the only thing I can think of is, I know it's made from lava, um, you know, volcanic lava. And the only thing I could really think of was that it has a lot of minerals in it, which is why... Um, roots show up so quickly on plants. So, I got off the phone with her that night and it, it just ate away at me and ate away at me. I wanted to know why. So, I looked it up. Now, this is a website. I looked at a few different um, websites, but this one is called Herbs at Home. I know you guys can't see it. That's okay. I'm going to read it to you. Um, <clears throat> what is perlite good for? Uses, types, and comparing growing media. And in the article, she has a bunch of things listed. How perlite is made, uses for perlite, types of perlite, uh, pros and cons for gardening uses, growing herbs and perlite, perlite versus other components, and the conclusion. I'm not going to read the whole article. The important part of what I think is important is why perlite works so well. So um, I'm just going to read a little bit through you, through to you, and then um, if you guys want, I can link this article down below, and then you can read the whole article. But okay, um, how perlite is made? A natural. It is made from a natural volcanic glass. Perlite is typically made from hydration of obsidian. The chemical made up is 70 to 75 percent silica or silica silicon dioxide. The remaining 20 to 25 percent is a mix of aluminum oxide, oxides of sodium, potassium, iron, magnesium, calcium, and moisture. So this, that is exactly why perlite roots your plants so well when you're propagating them. It is because of the aluminum oxide, the sodium, potassium, iron, magnesium, and uh, calcium, and of course moisture. And then of course we are putting moisture into the perlite to um, root our cuttings in. But another thing there was one more thing I wanted to read to you. It was, it was the pros. I mean, we all know we use it to put aeration into our soil and for our plants. Uh, okay. As with so many other products, perlite has both advantages and disadvantages as a growing media. In this case, the advantages far outweigh the downfalls, boosting its popularity, popularity in the horticultural industry. Pros. <coughs> its sterile nature makes it highly suitable for, for starting seeds. There's little risk of root rot or dampening off. 
uh, it naturally contains minerals needed for plant growth. So that is the big component of why perlite works so well to root our cuttings. And it also is contributing, when you're putting perlite into your soil mixture, it, it's putting extra nutrients in your soil for your plants. So that, that is also a huge, huge plus. You got iron, magnesium, calcium, potassium, um, and the other things that it mentioned in this article. So, you know, and it's non-toxic. So, you know, it doesn't require rinsing like other growing media does prior to use. And I'm assuming they're talking about, because I grow with uh, LECA, you have to rinse. Uh, lava rock, you have to rinse. River rock, you have to rinse. I use, for my orchids, I grow... 99% of my orchids are grown in lava rock, uh, river rock, and leka. And you do have to rinse them. So, and the other great thing about perlite, it is, it is a neutral pH, so it doesn't need to be adjusted, nor will it adjust the overall pH when mixed with other components. So, say you're, you're using fertilizer, well, say orchids for another example. Orchids need a certain pH. I'm not going to get into all that. But orchids need a certain pH to grow correctly and then also to, to bloom. So it's not going to throw your pH off too high or too low. So that's another great plus to it. Um, it can be used alone or it can be mixed with other media to create potting mixes like our soil. <clears throat> and like, you know, bark, soil, bark mixes, you know, whatever. Uh, a lot of times when I'm using uh, sphag moss, it, I, I mix perlite in with it, um, just so it's airy, because sphag usually has the tendency to pack down a little bit after a while of use. Um, it's great for seedling germination or plant propagation, as the particles allow for plants to be pulled from the perlite without damaging uh, without damage to the root system when it's time for transplanting. That's great. That's genius. I never thought about that. Uh, and it's reusable year after year since it uh, doesn't decompose. So you can, like, say if you're done propagating, you don't have nothing else, else to propagate, you can set this out, uh, let it dry or not let it dry, whatever, it doesn't even matter. And, um, put it, use it right back into your soil. So the only thing I noticed with using this is you can see right here, it started getting a little algae on the side of the window facing the south. No big deal. Algae don't scare me. So I'm not worried about that. It is also a low cost option. Perlite is cheaper um, than sand and it is cheaper than vermiculite. So. There's another great plus to um, perlite. It's easily available and simple to ma manufacture. And then they go through a bunch of cons, like it um, drains water away quickly, which is what most of us use it for. Uh, perlite holds water in the nooks found on its large surface area, but since it's made from am amorphous volcanic glass, it doesn't hold tightly. So that's why when we use it in a potting mixture, after you water and keep watering, it kind of will rise to a, a lot of it, not all of it, a lot of it will rise to the top of our soil, which no big deal. It looks a little ugly. It will turn green. It will turn brown. Like I have really hard uh, well water, so I have a very high pH. My pH on my well water is almost 8, so um, I'm not going to read through the most the rest of this. The only other thing I'm going to say is about the dusk. It can cause respiratory problems and eye irritation. Uh, so working with perlite, you want to make sure that you're very ca um, cautious. Uh, you can wear goggles or a mask to reduce dust exposure because you don't want to breathe in the dust from the perlite. It is not good for your lungs and you definitely don't want to get it into your eyes. So anyways, I will list this article uh, down below in the description if you guys want to, you know, take a look at it. But I'm going to set my phone down 
because I don't want to get water on it. But what I want to do is an experiment. I have um, a jar of perlite and I have a jar of water. And what I'm going to do is I have two cuttings that I want to make on my lemon lime philodendron upright. And I'm going to put one in perlite and I'm going to put one in regular water. I'm not going to use any rooting hormone or anything like that. Just straight. Perlite, water. Now, with my perlite, when I was using it to root my melanocrysum, I, I kept water in it. You can see, see the water at the bottom? That's a lot more than what was in it, but I actually need to dump some of this out. It's a little much. Let me do that. There we go. That's better. But I'm going to take my cuttings, one each, from my lemon lime. Let's see. Woo! Does my camera go up that high? Holy crap. Okay. I'm going to cut here. There's one piece. And then I'm going to cut here. Now I will move my camera back down. Gosh, I love this plant. It is so pretty. Okay, let me move my camera back down. There we go. So what I want to do is, this is, today is Wednesday. I think it is the, oh, I need my phone again. Okay, it is Wednesday, September 15th. So what I want to do is every week, I'll get on really quick make a video and we will check. We will check the perlite cutting versus the water cutting. So I'm going to go ahead and take my first piece and take that dead sheathing off. I'm going to cut this leaf off. Oh, I'm going to stick her in water. Just plain old water. There's nothing in it. It's just my tap water, my wall water. And then I'm going to take this cutting and I'm just going to trim that off a little bit. I don't need to cut that leaf off. And I'm going to stick her down in the perlite. Now, I've seen some videos where um, you know, they say cover it, cover your perlite. Um, I did not do that. I'm trying to see where my water level is here. So I am not going to do it because I didn't find that I needed it. Now, if it was winter, I probably might cover it to keep the moisture in uh, and the warmth. But being it's still summer and we're still like 90 degrees, oh, I'm going to leave it. And then this cutting just water. Now, I also have here, I did not bring my plant in, I just went in and cut it. I've got my beautiful, it's my Florida Beauty red stem. See the beautiful, the beautiful red stem. But I'm also going to, I want to make my pot a little bit fuller. So I am going to stick these in also. I'm going to cut those down here and then I will make a cut right here. Now it's kind of sort of not fair because this is the top coming cutting. We're gonna have one top cutting which usually they root out a little bit better. Not really. I mean I think they're probably pretty even. And then this is going to be a mid node. I'm just going to cut it right here Whoops. Ugh. And then I'm going to stick this down. Ah! Too much crap on the tail. I'm going to stick this down here in the perlite with my lemon lime. 
killing two birds with one stone. Oh boy, that's having a hard time getting down there. Hold on a second. Let me get a... There we go. Let me make kind of a hole. See if I can get her down in here a little bit better. There. So now we've got two different cuttings, philodendron lemon lime and my philodendron beauty red stem. And in perlite and then the same two in water. Um, I will check back with you guys on again on Wednesday. We'll make a video. I'll make a video. We'll check them and we'll see how they're doing. We'll see exactly how long and which one does better, the perlite or the water. Pretty simple, pretty clean cut, but I think it's just kind of fun to do experiments. Um, I've had other people tell me how great perlite works. I just never knew why and I wanted to know why. That was why I wanted to read you guys that article and let you know. That's why perlite works so well is because all the minerals. So um, we will. I will check back with you guys in a week and we'll just check these guys really quick. It'll be like a super quick one minute video, two minute video, whatever. But um, and we'll see what it does. So I'm excited and I can't wait to actually see. I wish I would have kept better um, track of my melanocrysum, but I didn't. I'm going to go ahead. Boy, I'll tell you. People are. I'm going to go ahead and get this melanocrysum potted up. Oops. And then I can get her set over in the window. Get her going nice. I'm excited to see her grow. She has been kind of a problem plant for me. It grows, but it don't really... It's not a, a pretty looking plant. And it hasn't gotten those long leaves. You can see I've had some problems with leaves opening up. They got rips in them, a couple of them here and there. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and fill her up some more. And then I'll get her water done nicely and get her set over by my mother plant that I took the cutting from. I'll probably have to like redo that stake but I won't do it on camera because I don't want this to be a super long video I just thought it was kind of cool what I found out about the perlite because I never knew the videos I've watched nobody ever said anything they just said use perlite it works great well I want to know why so why is it so great and now we know so I will go ahead and get back with you guys in next Wednesday. Unless something happens, God forbid I don't get sick enough on my back. I've been having issues with my back. That's why I thought this would be a great video because I can just sit down and relax and um, have at it. So I'm going to move this steak. I'll probably have to get another um twist tie and tie it down here at the bottom too. <laughs> she grew kinda wonky. Okay. But alright guys, I am going to let you go and I will see you back in a week and we will look at what progress these plants have made. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Peace.